Okay, so here is part three of me reading the Aristocats. When Napoleon started to snore, Edgar gently lifted him out of the sidecar and grabbed his hat with his teeth and put the dog on the haystack. Heck, after he nabbed the umbrella, he slipped away. This time he had left his noisy motorcycle down the road. He did not want to be chased again. Back in Paris, Rofert was conducting a thorough investigation. He had spent the day, day and the whole night interrogating with all of his mouse friends in the neighborhood. Nobody has seen a thing. In the morning, he went to the stables to ask Fru Fru the mare if she had noticed anything. Well, yes, Rofert, I noticed something strange, said the mare. The night before last, Edgar left on his motorcycle and came back without his sidecar. And last night he left again and came back with his sidecar. Thank you, Fru Fru. I've got a feeling that Edgar is up to no good. Let me know if he goes out again, said the mouse. When Rofert returned to the house, he was ve he was very surprised to to see that Duchess and her kittens had returned had returned. They were saying goodbye to their friend when Edgar opened the door. The butler could not believe his eyes. How had they made it back? The cats did not even notice his surprise because they were so happy to be home. But Edgar quickly thought of a way to get rid of them forever. That's it. I will lock them up in a trunk and send them some place far away, he thought. This time they won't ever come back. He grabbed the sack and caught the cats before they reached Madame's salon. The cats meowed and wriggled, wriggled in the bag, trying to get free. Rofert heard them and saw Edgar taking them out of the house. I knew that he was up to no good, he said to himself. I must get help. I'll go get the cat and brought them. That brought them there. What was his name? O'Malley, that's it. <clears throat> Mulford was courageous. Ages. He knew that cats did not like mice, especially alley cats, but he had to help his friends. He went after O'Malley. When he caught up to up with him, he explained what he had seen. O'Malley was furious. He did not like the idea that Duchess and the kittens might get hurt. Thanks, Rofert. He, you're a brave mouse. I must go and rescue them before he hurts them. them. But we'll need help. Go find my cat friend Scat Cat and his band and tell them to meet me at Madame Bonfamille's house. Quick. And with that, O'Malley ran back to the house. Rofert was a little nervous. Who was Scat Cat? Do you like mice? When Rofert found Scat Cat in his band, his heart was pounding furiously. How, how had the distinguished Duchess and the kittens m met the, these cats? If he didn't get ex explain, uh, he, if he didn't quickly explain why he had come, they might just take a bite out of him. Scat Cat picked him up by his tail. Just sorry, just taking the time. While the Siamese cat poked at him. You say O'Malley sent you here? Scat Cat asked the terrified mouse. Duchess and the kittens are in great danger, stammered Wilford. O'Malley needs, needs you to help save them. Scat Cat immediately let go of the mouse. Sure, we'll help Duchess and her kittens. Show us the way, he ordered. They took off for Madame's house. Edgar had taken the cats to the stables. He plopped them in the in a trunk and congratulated himself on his quick thinking. I'm scared, cried Marie. I'm choking in here, whined Toulouse. Berlioz said nothing, but his heart thumped loudly. Duchess tried to calm them down. Just as Edgar closed the trunk, the, she heard Fufu neighing. Fufu neighing. We are in the stables, she realized. Fufu, help, she cried as the lid closed.
Edgar was sticking a, a label on the trunk when Fru-Fru caught his coat and in her mouth. Timbuktu, Africa, read the lab label. The mare was furious. She pulled and pulled on Edgar's coat while the angry butler struggled to get free. Fru-Fru wanted to kick him, but she couldn't get close enough. She held on to Edgar as long as she could, neighing for help. O'Malley heard her screams and ran into the stables just as Edgar's coat ripped free. That silly mare, said Edgar. She thinks she can stop me. I must get this truck out of here out in time for the pickup. He pushed in it towards the door. Suddenly, O'Malley jumped on the top of him, hissing and growling. Edgar fought back, but he had no idea who or what he was fighting. All that he knew was that he was being scratched again and again. O'Malley fought hard. He would do anything for Duchess and the kittens. All of a sudden, Edgar was back on his feet. He grabbed a pitchfork and concerned O'Malley. I have you now, the butler hissed. With one swift jab, he pinned the tomcat to the wall. When Rowford tiptoed up to the pitchfork handle and whispered to the cat, Scat Cat and his friends are coming. O'Malley's face lit up. Edgar was not going to get away now. The butler sighed. He was not enjoying this. Everything was getting much too difficult. He straightened out his clothes and pushed the trunk a little closer to the door. One, two, three, go, a voice said, and suddenly the what Edgar thought were 100 cats jumped on him. They hissed, they bit, they scratched, they growled, and they pinned him down. Edgar could not move. Fru-Fru cheered them on. Rofert held his breath. Duchess and the kittens were saved. The little mouse ran to the trunk while Scat Cat and his friend, while Scat Cat freed his friend O'Malley. He quickly opened the lock and O'Malley leapt inside. The tomcat opened the bag and let Duchess Toulouse, Berlioz, and Marie out. He was relieved to see that they were not hurt. The little mouse, the little kittens cried because they were so happy to see him. Hey boys! Interrupted Scat Cat. Our work isn't over. This gentleman here needs some attention. He pointed to Edgar, pinned him to the ground by the by the other cat. Why don't we lock him up in the trunk and send him away, proposed Fufu. That way he'll never come back and bother us. Everybody thought that Fufu's idea was excellent. Edgar would be sent to Timbuktu. They tried. They tied him up, lifted him up with the help of the of a pulley, and Fru Fru swiftly, swiftly kicked him into the trunk. And after he, they locked it. They pushed the trunk outside to be hauled away by moving by the moving company. You'll love those blue skies and palm trees in Timbuktu, joked Scat Cat when the movers arrived to pick up the truck. Bon voyage, teased the Siamese cat. Everybody laughed. They happily watched the movers check the label and carry Edgar away. Duchess and O'Malley said goodbye to Scat Cat and his band and thanked them for their help. They promised to come to the attic for another jazz evening soon. Madame Bonfamille was very happy when she saw her cats. Tears and hugs and purrs and furry cuddles went out for everyone. Madame could see that Duchess was very fond of O'Malley. She asked him to stay. With a bit of grooming, O'Malley the alley cat became Madame's fifth
fifth Aristocat. She adopted him and added him to her will, and when her five children posed for a photograph, what a handsome family they made. Oh, <laughs> isn't that cute? Okay, so I hope you guys like this. Um, thank you for watching. I will see you in. This will be my last book probably for a while. And I'll see you guys in another video soon. Bye. Thank you for watching again. Bye.